Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. And today it's back into Gary Grigsby's War in the Pacific Admirals Edition. This is our Let's Play against the devilish Mr. Ludrick, a play by email, if you would. Uh, we have progressed along here. We're now at the combat resolution for February 15th and February 16th of 1942. I've kind of teased this turn for a little bit now because when it happened, it, it punched me right in the gut. Uh, you never want to get a turn from Laudrick that says the uh, rising, you know, the flames uh, on the water look like the rising sun of Japan or something. Yeah, I mean, you never want to get one of those messages in a play by email. Uh, we'll talk a lot about this turn because it points out something you should never do in your games and you would think a veteran like myself had learned but uh no it happens it happens to even the good ones gentlemen uh but let's jump into it february 15th and february 16th and let's see what the hell i'm talking about um there we go i can't remember if it happens on the first day or the second day maybe i'll keep you on the edge of your seat uh but it was quite a well it shouldn't have been it shouldn't have been and that's why in the last combat resolution i was looking for certain things that that maybe i missed um well off we go we'll see we'll see it all happen in real time all right, uh, we got down here to this uh, base in New Britain. This was the group that got kicked out of Rabal, and we just made our way down the coast into that base. Uh, but he's going to come take that eventually, obviously. Uh, those guys are about starved out. Um, here we, let's see, oh, I see. He was bringing in a destroyer and two cargo ships into Ambon, trying to get more here. We've been talking about this. He, What he brought to Ambon initially was just not enough to dislodge us here. And he's had to come back and bring some more. If you're a Japanese player, you do not want these kind of situations because you just can't afford to be slowed down at all. Uh, you know, ultimately he's going to take the base, but it's all about, you know, the time timing and uh, we've slowed him down here you can see that we have 150 millimeter gun batteries uh, up here we do no damage this time seven coastal gun shot in defense but yeah he's having to, he's having to bring more there which is always what we want to see on the allied side certainly uh, we've got a Japanese sub off of Perth and he does get into an AK here I guess I had not thought about this one quite as much uh given you know things that will develop uh but the tambua does take heavy damage now i have been running destroyer shuttles here and maybe we should talk about it during a turn sometime but basically i have about four or five destroyers here at perth and i run them out here and i ferry the task forces in I take them back out, you know, a certain ways, and then I dis, you know, I take the destroyers out, and I go to the next next task force. Now this one, I do believe we have escort in there, but it looks like it evaded the escort, and the Tambua was hit, and now it sinks. Well, it was not only hit, it, well, it was hit hit very hard. How about that? Uh, because it has sunk. All right, going through all the different phases, sub phases. And now he's landing here just south of Ley at that base. Now we do have troops at the middle of those three bases, but we do not at uh, Salamoa. Boy, that sounded good when I said it. It's probably not how you pronounce it, but it sounded good. All right, uh, here come our Coast Watcher reports, letting us know uh, what their people are seeing off various coasts. Wasn't a whole lot that time. And now he continues to unload troops there. Just off of Port Moresby, a little bit northeast of it. Obviously, he's either got to come ac across the island or he's got to try to come all the way around and land troops up there. All right, uh, we've got some ASW work going here. We found a Japanese sub off of Suva. I've got, uh, you know, a couple of destroyers in this area, and I'm also sending 
uh, escorts up with anything coming to Suva. Uh, we're really worried about his carriers coming down here, um, but I'm trying to escort everything up. The islet uh, did find the SSRO60. Uh, nothing happened, though. Uh, we sighted it, but there was nothing dropped in the water. All right, now you saw the first indication there. We were just off the coast of India, and we had something shadowed by Japanese aircraft. Now, he does not have a base close enough to Japan, or I'm sorry, close enough to India to have aircraft. Now, that could have been a misidentification. You see that all the time in this game, uh, which makes this game, you know, one of the things that makes it great but we were being shadowed by aircraft which is a very strange thing to see kind of off the uh, western coast of india um down in that southern portion so it's, it's just a flavor of things to come because it was not a misidentification uh here come bombers in at china uh, just to the southeast of Nanyang. He takes four planes damaged. We take ee, 283 casualties. All right. Uh, now he's bombing into the southeastern part of the country. 22 sallies in there. We take 197 casualties. So two big bombing runs for him. The one up here by Nanyang, one down here. These guys, again, you know, we got, we got blocked off for them trying to retreat back to our lines. I then said, okay, let's push them out towards the coast. Uh, wherever they may run, he's got bombers. So... You know, it's, uh, we're taking a lot of losses from the air. One damaged Nan here, again, southeast of Nanyang. 36 casualties on our part. And now this is just north of Kukong. All of these guys are trying to get up here to Hang Yang. 21 Sonyas came in. We damaged one of them, and we took 26 on the ground. He's going to come for the other group that's down here. These guys kind of got separated. One one part of the stack got into this hex before the other part of the stack. Uh, and he's going to bomb both because that's uh, logic for you. Uh, no losses, no casualties for us on the ground. All right, Sonia's. Now this group got, I want to say it got, it made it over the river. The problem is it got pushed back here. It got attacked like three times along the way and kept just getting shoved hexes. That's one way to do it. Uh, two damage Sonia's, 108 casualties there. Okay, southeast of Nanyang yet again. Uh, he's really coming after this group this time, this stack. We take 44 casualties on the ground and didn't damage anything. All right, 29 bombers in on this group. 62 casualties. Now into southeastern China. China with nine Sonyas, 41 casualties. I'd love to see the experience on some of his bomber crews. I mean, some of these guys have to have like 99 plus experience. Well, you can't really go 99 plus, but at least 99. Uh, this is our aircraft. We've got nine Falcons and we've got 13 of these 139s. And where he landed here in Semarang, I'm flying bombing runs on these guys. So we're finally doing a little uh, ground bombing. And look at that. Hey, hey, hey. what do you know? Uh, there's something new in this game all the time. We cause 160 Japanese casualties on the ground. So now he's probably uh, caused about a quarter of a million casualties and that's maybe not even an exaggeration of ours on the ground we've caused 160 we're making a big comeback now we're going to come back down in here now you're probably only going to get two or three of these runs because he will get fighter aircraft over here very quickly to start protecting his troops but we caused 63 more casualties there okay fantastic so 223 all toll and we took no plane losses and it was so good, we sent over some L-212s and caused eight big casualties on the ground there. All right. Lots of sightings there. They were actually sighting our own aircraft. They even said that. Allied fighter bombers, they were... Okay, so we got a, a Japanese 
float plane, and then we've got Japanese air activity up by Bombay. That can only mean one thing, my friends, and here they appear like out of the mist at Bombay. He has snuck a full carrier group up to Bombay. Now, if you remember our setup before, we have our only British carrier at Bombay. We have our only British battleship that's on the map at Bombay. This was just a terrible set of uh, circumstances that all came together here as he has brought a full carrier task force to Bombay. Now, you will not see that often, and it was a brilliant move by him. Uh, nine zeros uh, are going to run a little cap, you know, they're going to try to sweep us out here on cap. Now, we send nothing up. Why is that? Well, because I had taken the fighters we had at Bombay just this last turn. I, I thought, okay, well, for a turn, I'm going to move them down and get them to Colombo because I was thinking, surely we would sight him coming around. I'd rather have him further south where he would get to first. No, it all came together that he came through these islands, and we'll talk more about it after the aftermath of this turn. He came through those islands. We did not spot him with anything, and if we come down here, we do have recon aircraft here, but I've been uh, mentioning the last couple of turns, you have got to get float planes and recon aircraft at Adu, at Mail, at Trivandrum. So he can't get through here. Now, I don't know if he went through here or here or all the way around here. Probably not. I mean, that would take a lot of endurance. Um, but he has snuck three full task forces up here. This is the carrier task force. He's also got battleships and cruisers up here. And the <laughs> our British carrier and battleship are completely uncovered by cap. You never ever want to do this and he just caught us completely by surprise so he flew the cap over uh then he brings 97 kates another 30 kates 44 vowels 34 zeros just a huge uh bombing force here in at bombay you can see we've got a lot of anti-aircraft uh gunfire that goes up so we do damage a lot of planes because even the ships that we have in here at port are going to fire up their anti-aircraft so we do damage two kates we uh one kate is destroyed by flak four more damaged kates one more destroyed by flak 13 damaged vowels two destroyed you know i mean our flak went nuts here right because we do have a battleship and a carrier here that both have a, a tremendous amount of flak and i've got some anti aircraft just naturally at Bombay but as you can see uh, there were a lot of allied ships damaged now for whatever reason his bombing run hit our uh, cargo task force that had just gotten into Bombay first well wait a minute that is not true no sorry these ships were at port um, at anchor here at Bombay he gets an AK you know these are all gonna go down They've, they've all got heavy fires, on fire, heavy damage. Uh, cargo, 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 five cargo, a destroyer, a submarine tender, another a small cargo, a transport, uh, and then two more cargoes, and then a KV, the fertility, all hit with heavy damage here. Uh, but like Billy May says, wait, there's more. A repair shipyard was hit. The port was hit. Uh, and that's why he was hitting all of this, because they were all considered in port at anchor. Uh, our uh, carrier and our battleship were in a task force that was, you know, not not at anchor in the port. So it hit this first. Uh, that was huge. And I thought, OK, well, maybe, maybe we've escaped. Uh, spoiler alert. No, they're they're coming back. So that was a massive bombing run, obviously. Now, but those were all cargo ships, like eight-point ships, you know, a couple uh, that were worth a little more than that. Uh, the KV is worth like six points. The subtender is actually probably the most valuable ship that got hit there. Uh, the destroyer is only like six or eight points, too. I mean, those are just not that much. Um, 
Okay, so there the destroyer went down. One of the cargo, two of the cargo. They're all sinking. Three of the cargo. Uh, if you're a fortune hunt, uh, a fortune hunter, and want to go diving off of Bombay in this uh, made-up universe, uh, you would get rich. I think there's a lot at the bottom of the sea. Get the get a salvage ship over there. Okay, uh, he's going to finally attack this group that's southeast of Nanyang. They were completely obliterated by bombing. I mean, look at this. We've got these group armies, um, which are the headquarters, but then we've got three cores that were completely obliterated by bombing. Uh, uh, kind of surprisingly these cores did not surrender they actually retreated towards i chang and got out of here which i found very surprising now they don't have they, they didn't have a whole lot left we did lose 4000 casualties he lost 14 men we lost 4025 they got kicked out into this hex uh but we may be able to save those cores and rebuild them uh and get these guys to safety because they kicked out of there. I was very surprised they didn't surrender, given those odds. What about these guys? Well, we've got two more full Chinese cores. Uh, this one surrenders, the 13th. Yeah, they both surrendered. Um, and so I was assuming these would, but they didn't. Uh, here he takes 18 casualties. We take 2,300. So in all of this action, we lose over 6,000 uh, 6, men. He, lo he lost 32 uh, that's what you're looking for is the Japanese player. Uh, out here, we're finally getting attacked. We've run into something, uh, some Japanese division. Um, we don't have a whole lot here. This core is down to, he's not getting replacements, right? And so not out here. And so every time he gets attacked, he keeps getting whittled away. Now he only had two to one odds on us and we actually were in, you know, defensible terrain. So he took 141 casualties uh we took 2173 ouch all right he's trying to uh attack sabu out here but we actually have him out out combat valued uh once they adjust everything out because these guys are disrupted our guys are 27 to 17 on that we were in good terrain for us uh he took 50 casualties we took 67 okay so kind of even there We'll eventually get kicked out of there, but not yet. Now he's trying to take Sabang, and he does take Sabang on the northern tip of Sumatra. And all of these guys are going to retreat. I was actually kind of surprised they didn't surrender as well. And now they've gotten kicked out into this hex. Um, we had all negatives on our modifiers. He has a good leader, evidently. He took 31 casualties. We took 754. All right, he's just off of Kuala Lumpur across the Strait of Malacca here in Sumatra. He's going to take that base. Uh, we'll just call that T-Town. Uh, if you can pronounce that, God bless. We had nothing left here. So, I mean, we had nothing in that base, and he captures that. All right, now he's uh, doing a shock attack up here at Palawan, the island of Palawan. Um, I forget what this town is called, but he takes it. It's uh, ground combat near Puerto Princesa. Oh, I guess there isn't a base underneath there. Okay, sure. Uh, we took 192 casualties. Now he's going to do something at Ambon again. Allied bombardment attack. That's us. Uh, again, we're just lobbing shells. May as well. We have a good adjusted value. Uh, we're sitting there in that base. He took 35 casualties from our bombardment. So we've had a tragedy at Port Blair. We've had, well, I call them disasters or tragedies, depending on how I'm feeling that day. Uh, we had the disaster out by Suva, the disaster out port, by Port Blair, but they pale in comparison at the tragedy of Bombay. And it was all about my recon. And uh, let that be a lesson to you. Now, that, again, when you're the Allied player, this is not a fatal thing. If you lose one British carrier, the British carrier 
suck, uh, quite frankly, uh, early war. Uh, and, you know, losing the battleship hurts, but, you know, really, I should have just kept them both off map. There's no reason to have them on. So I made two mistakes. There's no reason to have those on the map right now, because the only things that can happen with them are bad when they're on the map this early, because you don't, I mean, you want to have them under a lot of air cover. And, okay, so three bad things happen there. Uh, they shouldn't have been on the map. They should have been at a port where they had a lot of cap over the top of them, and Bombay did until last turn, and I had just moved it thinking I had time to move it down to Colombo where I expected the pressure again, and I was wrong, okay? Uh, and the third, the third thing is the recon, and that's the one that really, really bugs me is because you have got to be able to detect a full carrier task force coming off the southern tip of India, um, and we just don't have enough recon down there. Now, part of that is you just don't have a lot of recon at the start, but if you're gonna put them anywhere, put them in that area, uh, really at Port Blair and probably uh, you know, at Colombo, Trivandrum, North Mail, uh, all of those places right there, Diego Garcia, because you just can't allow something like that to happen. Not because it would cause us to lose the war again. You know, losing these ships in the grand scheme of things isn't a big deal as far as winning the war, quote unquote, they're, but they're worth a lot of points. Uh, the carrier, I think, is worth probably 250 to 270 the battleship is worth over 200 points and that's what kills you i mean 400 points when you're talking about we've got about 6500 points right now is a big big chunk i mean you know it's seven percent of our total our point total uh you just can't lose that and then you add in all the cargo ships the sub tender all of that it becomes like a six or 600 point loss or so don't worry we'll count it up when we go through the setup next time okay uh this is one of our dutch subs here uh it's off of borneo it looks like maybe he found us yep he did uh asw attack he gets six hits in on our dutch sub Excuse me. Wow, big hiccup um, with one of his sub chasers. Uh, so he gets some hits in on us there. We're on February 16th, by the way, now. Uh, hey, we're trying to get an AKL into Port Moresby and a Japanese sub has found it. It looks like, yeah, we got hit shell hits. So he was on the surface. Uh, we got 12 shell hits from a Japanese Japanese subs, so they were kind of having a surface battle. I was trying to get these little AKLs. They're one-point ships, right? I was trying to get as much supply into Moresby as I could now that he has landed um, down there in Papua New Guinea. Uh, well, that didn't exactly work out. I think that ship actually makes it into Port Moresby. We'll find out. So when I was going through this the first time, and I've started trying to record them for, with my initial reactions, when I was going through this the first time, uh, that probably would have not been safe for work or for uh, your children uh, <laughs> if you would have heard my reaction. Uh, so maybe it was good uh, that I didn't get that uh, <laughs> recorded right when it happened the first time. Uh, I've calmed down a bit in the in the week or two that's passed. Uh, because, you know, other good things have now happened in the game. The game, it's not like the, you know, the game's over or something. Um, but it was quite a, quite a kick in the, <laughs> in the nethers. Uh, okay. The Darvel, uh, was also found by this Japanese sub, but it made it past and it actually got into Port Moresby. It fired two torpedoes at us with no hits. Uh, we're retreating from enemy surface combat. Oh, I think those cargo ships were just coming into Bombay now that I think about it. Here's another one of the AKLs. I think I had three in that task force, and now it's kind of snooped at all three of them. It hit the first one 12 times, uh, but the other two have kind of snuck past it. And now we've got all kinds of sightings out here. Sure, thanks, guys. Um well, I guess it's not their fault. It's it's the uh, Coast Watchers down here that failed me, although he may have gone all the way around. 
Again, I'd love to know. I'll probably go back and watch his side when this game's over and just see some of the things he did. Although, hell, who knows? We may boot it up and play it again. So maybe I won't. I, I like to be surprised like that. It's what adds the spice when you play another human. And he certainly shocked me here. And you can see he's actually got a fourth task force that's up here. Uh, the zeros sweep across in the morning as they did last time. Now he's sweeping Heng Yang. All right. Uh, with 10 Oscars, they swept over Heng Yang. Uh, the zero sweep Bombay again. I'm sure he was at, he was as shocked as I was that I didn't have any cap up here. Usually you should at least have 30 or 40 fighters above your carriers wherever they uh, are in port. Uh, we did not, and uh, I think we're going to get a nice picture of a carrier here in a second. And there it is. The Indomitable was sitting here. Boom. That's beautiful uh, model of a ship here. He's got four valves that are in on it. You can see it's already on fire. Uh, he's just running into almost no opposition. These British carriers don't have many fighters to begin with, and it was the only fighter. It, they were the only fighters that I had here at Bombay. And you can see the Indomitable, the Royal Sovereign, the battleship is getting hit, uh, light cruisers, cruisers, so on, so forth. Now, we did hit a lot with anti-aircraft, uh, but, it, I mean, you know, he doesn't care about that. He, This is exactly what a Japanese player would want to happen. Six damage cates, one destroyed by flak, 21 damage cates, uh, one destroyed by flak, four damage vowels. Uh, we did get aircraft up off of the carrier. So, yeah, they flew out and tried to do something. We had a full more, uh, the Fulmar 2s. These are fighter bombers. They're not very good. It's the only, uh, well, you have fighter bombers. Then you have the Albacore, which I believe are torpedo aircraft, uh, torpedo bombers. And then you have the Sea Hurricanes, which are fighters. As you can see, we're the ones that end up losing 11 planes here uh, as they tried to get up and do something. But, uh, here you go. Here's the uh, damage. The Indomitable takes three bomb hits, three torpedo hits. So he was all over this thing. It immediately sunk. It's not even like it caught on fire and maybe you could do something with it. Uh, no, it sunk. The Royal Sovereign bomb hits four, torpedo hits five. It sunk. Uh, somehow the cruiser Dorsetshire uh, is alive for now. Uh, the Admiral Chase cargo ship heavy fires. The light cruisers, eh, you know, whatever. Uh, heavy fires, torpedo hits, heavy damage. The Dene made it out alive so far. The Emerald takes two bomb hits. It's on fire. The Cornwall, which is a very good cruiser, torpedo hits one on fire. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, when we set up this next time, we're you know where we're probably going to focus, and it's going to be right in that Bombay region. We'll go and do kind of an after-action report. Uh, we'll talk more about the recon failings there and also just keeping those guys off the map. There was I was being lazy, quite frankly. Well, I don't know if lazy is the right word. I had to batch them up into a task force and send them there, so it's probably less, less lazy than just letting them sit at Aden or at Cape Town. Uh, but I was probably just being a little lax, uh, thinking, well, he's not going to come to Bombay. Let's go ahead and just get him in position for when the other aircraft carriers and whatnot come about. Surely he's not bringing a carrier task force to Bombay. Uh, and that is how naval disasters happen, such thinking. Four damage planes here. Uh, we take 250 casualties on the ground. As this group that got kicked out, uh, you know, the s southeast of Nanyang, the, the uh, cores that are left, they're getting bombed yet again, uh, 250 casualties. Now he's bombing just to the east of Yan'an. Uh, I'm actually splitting these forces and I'm getting out of Yan'an. Oh, he had a lot of damaged planes there. I should have looked at that. 21 sallies in on this group. Uh, no damaged planes, no casualties on the ground. Uh, this group southeast, I, I guess I should start saying east of Xinyang now. He, he's gotten kicked a long ways back here. One damage plane, 71 casualties. Into Han Yang. Uh, this was just a sweep with two Oscars. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, that'll go down in infamy. That was, that's the biggest naval disaster I've ever had in this game. Um, it, uh, <laughs> it I, I, you know, I say I don't mean to dwell on it, but I actually do. I mean, there's a lot of lesson to be learned from it, which is the whole point of making these videos. But uh, still, I want to win the damn game. Uh, two damage hands, 18 casualties reported. All right, 13 Sonyas in here. 65 casualties, two damage planes for the Japanese. All right, this is just east of Xinyang, six Lilies. We take 14 casualties on the ground. Nine Ans coming in here, 14 casualties on the ground. I'm surprised these guys have any anything left, these stacks. They've been bombed, I don't, you know, 50 times, and that's, you know, seriously, 50 times. At least they've been bombed. 38 casualties this time. Hey, why not? One more time? No. Nine Sonyas in here to southeastern China. Um, as time goes on here in the game, I am starting to form up that Chinese line. Uh, we're in a lot better shape, uh, certainly in China. Okay, uh, these are our bombers. Again, I think I've surprised him here a little bit that I'm running a bombing campaign on him. Uh, he has not brought in fighters yet. Now, he doesn't have a good... Uh, airfield here until he really establishes himself in Semarang. And so we're getting uh, some free shots at him. Uh, it will not be long before Zeros and Oscars are down here covering his troops. But for right now, anyway, we get another 153 casualties on the Japanese with that bombing run. And then we've got uh, another one coming in here. 51 casualties. We're not losing any planes, uh, which is nice. Now, I said that, we'll see, uh, but his flak must not be very strong from these guys, and we cause another 59 casualties there. And then the Falcons uh, come in with seven casualties for the Japanese on the ground. And now I've got some B-17 runs coming out of Darwin, actually. So I've moved some B-17 fortresses to Darwin. I like to do that and really sometimes do some naval bombing. Now, they're not great at it, obviously. Uh, your B-17 pilots really, you know, port attack, airfield attack, ground attack. Uh... But you can take some some shots sometimes. This time I decided to go after Buela. Uh, I think I was aiming at the port here. Uh, yeah, port attack, uh, four 500-pound bombs, but we miss. We're coming in at a very high altitude. I actually, since he doesn't have much fighter cover down, uh, down you know, in that Darwin area, I probably really... Yeah, as you can see, now I'm bringing all the fighters from north. I already had that going on. They were going to transfer down there, uh, but also the planes that were supposed to be on the carrier, they came back and they said, whoops, no carrier here anymore. They have also landed at Bombay. So now they will be up in cap at Bombay, but they've got no carrier to fly off of, so they're just coming straight out of the airfield. Yeah, just perfect, perfect storm of events there, moving the carriers or moving the uh, fighters out of Bombay, him showing up here, no detection of it, uh, us having our two main ships of the British Navy that we have over here now just happening to be at port here. Oh, there's still ships remaining, though, and he's going to come in and try to get the Dorsetshire. I can't remember... I mean, we've still got cruisers and light cruisers. And I mean, I had the whole British Navy out here um, that we have in the game now. We damaged 12, 14 planes. The Dorsetshire now has heavy damage. The Durban, the light cruiser, has heavy damage. The Emerald did take two bomb hits, but didn't take uh, any heavy damage or on fire. The Dene take eight took eight bomb hits, heavy fires, heavy damage. The Cornwall, heavy fires, heavy damage. Uh, some of the destroyers and the destroyer escort, the Jumna, did survive uh, that contact anyway. Yeah, and you could see all of these planes are diverting because they were coming back to land on ships that no longer existed. Uh, and so they're landing at Bombay. 
just a brilliant, beautiful surprise attack. Uh, most of it my fault, but you got to give credit where credit is due. Uh, that was just an awesome maneuver by him. The Dene sinks. Finally, that pulse is over. And I was sitting there thinking, gosh, please just get out of there. <laughs> Leave me alone. Uh, and we'll see next turn what he decides to do. Uh, Cebu holds on. Got a decent force there. The problem is they run out of supplies, really, no matter what you do. He took 83 casualties. We took 71 casualties. So, I mean, we're fighting him kind of to a standstill with what he's got here now. He's probably going to have to bring more, uh, much like he is at Ambon. We're bombarding him again because he can't really mount uh, an attack there. He just doesn't have enough. And so we just keep lobbing shells at him. All right, that's going to be the action as we uh, go around, expand some forts. We'll see what we get in this time. As far as reinforcements go. Well, we need, we need more British ships now. Some of those were also... Uh, Dutch ships. We had some Australian ships in that group. I mean, it was the whole cluster of ships that I had around the Indomitable. Uh, that's, you know, all the escort support ships. Right, running the last few phases of the turn here. Oh, Yanan, we're losing a point because we don't have anything here to garrison. You can see we now have a lot of ship captains uh, looking for new reassignments. Uh, we get a cargo ship in, a tanker ship in at Abaddon. Uh, we get uh, two brand new squadrons of planes that I had flown down from Bombay, so I guess I actually took them to Calcutta. Looks like we're getting quite a bit of AA. Yeah, I really just expected him at Calcutta or Colombo again. I figured he might come at Colombo just because we have the Prince of Wales trying to get repaired there. But oh no, uh, he did come at Bombay, and when we come back next time, we're going to go look at the aftermath of all of that see all the different ships that went down, how many points they were worth, uh, and talk about in the setup how we try to, you know, what what do you do now? You know, you've had a disaster. How do you try to uh, dig yourself out of that? Uh, so that'll be, a, that'll be a lot of fun. Believe me, it's a lot more fun now that I'm going back to it a couple of weeks later. Uh, but <laughs> it wasn't nearly as much fun then. So anyway, this has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. I know I did for the most part, for the most part. I'll talk to you next time. Have a great one.